Hi guys, it's Bianca, and I've just spent the past couple of hours at the Napoleon Perdas headquarters in Alexandria. Now, not only have I had an amazing transformation, but I've also learned a lot of useful tips and tricks when applying your makeup, gone through some hot Instagram trends, and also delved into the makeup industry as a whole with one of Napoleon Perdas' very own global makeup artists. So let's go get glam and meet the lady who taught me what I learned today. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give you a nice cleanse. Love it. <laughs> so I'm just going to spritz your face with some moisture mist to begin with. And then I'm going to use my all-time favourite Autopilot Hydrating Milk Cleanser. Basically, <laughs> this is one of our new calming primers. So if you find you've got a little bit of redness, um, this will instantly kind of smooth out the skin. And it's got algae extract, so it does have that sort of soothing and calming ingredient in it. The next thing I'm going to go into is brows and mascara, okay. which is something that Napoleon is kind of passionate about. So I'm just going to start by applying a little bit of brow. Anyway, so now we're going to go into concealing and perfecting the face. So any foundation doesn't really need to be around the jawline to be mask-like. It should all just kind of blend and fuse seamlessly. So I'm going to use the one concealer. So it's got this kind of salmon undertone because mm. um, it instantly like, you know, if you're looking at colour theory, I suppose, peach definitely instantly brightens a particular area. So I'll just work that kind of underneath. This is where I like to go into contouring. Um, and I've chosen the camera finish again, but just in a couple of shades deeper. Mm -hmm. So I'm just using a shade one to two de shades deeper than skin tone and I'm really only going to concentrate on areas that I kind of want to give shape to. We're going to create kind of like a smoky eye. Now I kind of like violet tones because it is quite a universal shade. And I have two types of shadows, one to sculpt, one to highlight. So if you kind of are choosing colours for your eyes when you are creating that sort of smoky eye, um, look for a deeper colour that defines your eye. Then look for something that's going to be almost your blender. So I have this trick that I like to use. Um, you can use a damp brush and that'll give like a really nice opaque finish to the eye. So just the mauve shade all over the eyelid. This one's called um, High Voltage Violet. And then just again, I'm just going to bring some of that colour underneath. Okay, so we're going to go on to lips. Um, so first what I'm going to do is use the deeper shade, the lip pencil. And I'm literally just going to start to work the outer corners of the lips. Um, so now that I've got that one there, I'm going to blend with lipstick. Um, the next one is in the buff. But you know, if you don't have a lip pencil of this shade, you can use a concealer, you can use anything just to pat through the center. So I'm just going to work the in the buff through the center. We're done. Now you just need your hair out, I like know. you need to put some <laughs> accessories on. It's I love just so it. it all kind of sits and happens. The makeup industry is, has this like sort of paradoxical reputation where on when, one end people think that you know it's totally narcissistic, everyone's obsessed with themselves, but on the other end it's very like plagued with insecurities. I mean, what do you find to be the case when you're doing their makeup? Um, look, it is a combination of both, I'm not going to lie about that, but I think there needs to be a combination of those elements because those industries just strive for, for perfection. There is that narcissism I suppose but I haven't really come across anyone who's been that personality that's completely narcissistic where you think you know what you need some medication and just need to <laughs> <laughs> sort it out um, my aim or my goal is to make someone look beautiful and love yeah, themselves of course. so I yeah it's kind of there is that sort of double standard I suppose in the industry but um, I think we're getting better with it what would be your final tip Yes. tips even for budding makeup artists out there. Um, and this is something that's like I continuously did and sometimes I made mistakes but I still went with it. Just always create, like continuously create. Like I wasn't always the best makeup artist but you know at the same time I, I almost always gave it a shot because I was like you know what tummy makeup comes mm. off and I always tried to kind of tap into my creativity. You know, at the end of the day, we're artists, and so we need that sort of creativity to kind of nourish our soul and kind of, you know, flourish, I suppose, as artists. So if they stop creating and they stop kind of, 
trialing and stuff like that, then they'll never learn and it'll ne that passion will wither away and there won't be any creativity. Yeah, and that's a shame because, yeah, it's, you know, what I do is really creative and you need that creativity.